We can divide poroelasticity issue which is well known in soil mechanics into drained poroelasticity and undrained poroelasticity. What is a drained poroelasticity? Here the rock or sediment is stressed when fluid does not exist in the pore space. It is a dry condition. And what is the undrained poroelasticity? In this case the rock or sediment is stressed when fluid exists in the pore space. So pore space is to be there and there has to be fluid. Now we can define the stiffness of porous material capital K or KD for the drain poroelasticity case D for the drain condition is equal to minus delta P divided by delta V divided by V. Delta P is a pressure change that has been applied on the rock or the sediment. Delta V is a change in volume and V is the initial volume. So we can call delta V by V also as dilation or the volumetric strain as well. A similar definition can be made for the undrained poroelasticity Ku which is the stiffness of the material is equal to minus P divided by delta V divided by V. This will be delta P. Okay. Consider V volume of rock where the solid volume is Vs and the pore volume is Vp. Obviously V is equal to Vs plus Vp. Therefore change in V can be written as sum of change in Vs and change in Vp. Delta V equal to delta Vs plus delta Vp. Now the apparent bulk modulus can be defined. Let us see how it can be done. We can define K1 as the stiffness is equal to minus delta P divided by delta Vs by V. Note here Vs is used. So here this term is taking care of only the solid portion of the rock which will include the matrix, cement and the grains in case of sedimentary rocks. And we have K2 is equal to minus delta P divided by delta Vp by V. Note here P is used so P stands for the pore space. So this entire expression is for the when we are considering only pore space. Delta P in these cases are the same which means under a pressure change of delta P how a volume of sediment or rock V has behaved has been demonstrated in terms of Vs and Vp. Now from here one can write from here one can write delta V divided by V is equal to delta Vs divided by V total volume plus delta Vp divided by V the total volume. Now this delta Vs by V we will find out from here delta Vs by V is equal to minus delta P divided by K1 and delta Vp by V which is here delta Vp by V if I take here and put K2 down it becomes minus delta P divided by K2 that is what is stated over here. Let us call this as equation 1 delta V by V is equal to minus delta P K1 inverse plus K2 inverse and now let us consider the equivalent bulk modulus K and here we are considering the complete rock volume and which is taking care of the solid and the pore space. That K can be defined in the way all the K's are defined K is equal to minus delta P by delta V divided by V. Delta P is a pressure change. The same pressure change we have considered earlier separately for the pore space case and the solid case. So from here we can write delta V by V take it up and put K down so it is minus delta P and K inverse. Let us call this as equation 2. Now from equation 1 and 2 this is equation 1 delta V by V is equal to this and in equation 2 delta V by V equal to that. So we are going to equate this portion with that portion. If we do that minus delta P cancels out and we finally get K inverse is equal to K1 inverse plus K2 inverse. Just recollect K is the equivalent bulk modulus. So the bulk modulus or stiffness for the solid and that for the pore space are K1 and K2 respectively and capital K is the equivalent amount. 
we have seen this equation k inverse equal to k1 inverse plus k2 inverse. Note that if k1 is very high which happens for rocks for the solid materials bulk modulus is very high k1 inverse becomes very small number. In that case k inverse becomes equals to k2 inverse which become which means k equal to k2. That means the bulk modulus of the entire material of rock or sediment becomes equal to that of the pore space. And from this equation k inverse equal to k1 inverse plus k2 inverse, we can think of a series spring for the drain bulk modular situation where delta p amount of stress change has happened. There are two springs and they are representing Vs and Vp, k2 and k1 and the equivalent k from this spring will be given by this relationship. We have called this derivation as the that for the drained bulk modulus because we have not brought any k value for the fluid that means the fluid is absent in this case. In fact, for an ideal porous medium of homogeneous isotropic solid this relation is more accurately correct k inverse is equal to k s inverse what is k s here s for the solid k s is the bulk modulus of the solid. So, instead of k 1 some books may write k s over here plus phi, phi is the porosity multiplied by k p inverse here p stands for the pore space k p stands for the bulk modulus for the pore space and as we understand here k p is same as basically that k 2. So, from book to book the way of writing may vary. Let us see now a situation of the undrained condition. Here the pressure change that has happened on the rock or sediment can be written as the effective stress delta p equal to delta p dash plus delta p, delta p is the pore pressure. Now consider that this delta p dash effective stress is changing the pore volume by delta v p amount. This is a change in pore volume not the original one. And this is happening with a bulk modulus k 2 and also consider delta p the pore pressure is changing the fluid volume by delta v f, f for fluid. And in this case k 3 is the bulk modulus. So, we can write from this statement k 2 is equal to minus delta p dash divided by delta v p divided by v. v is the grand total volume being considered and from this statement we can write k 3 equal to minus delta p divided by delta v f divided by v. Now from these two equations we have to understand before proceeding that delta v f is equal to delta v p this delta v p is equal to delta v f. We consider that there is a pore space which is completely filled by fluid. So, the change in volume of fluid will be equal to the change in volume of the pore space. So, remembering that and summing up k 2 and k 3 apply this formula and find out the delta p. Delta p is given by delta p dash delta p dash is equal to minus k 2 multiplied by delta v p or delta v f divided by v and then plus delta p. Delta p can be written as minus k 3 multiplied by delta v f divided by v. And then we find out the delta p amount is equal to minus k 2 plus k 3 multiplied by delta v p by v. We can also write delta p is equal to minus k 4 delta v p by v where k 4 is the equivalent bulk modulus. So, from this equation and that equation we can write that k 4 is equal to k 3 plus k 2. However, in this reduction there is a simplification made. In reality the delta p 
which is written here, the pore pressure can deform the VS solid volume as well. In that case, such a simple deduction will not work. Anyway, with this, what we have got right now, K4 equal to K3 plus K2, we can think in terms of parallel spring for the undrained bulk modulus situation. Here, you can see as a spring K1 I have written delta P is a pressure change applied and for this spring we have assigned K2 and for this spring we have assigned K3 delta P dash is acting in this way delta P is acting that way. So the undrained bulk modular situation can be represented mechanically in terms of parallel spring arrangement. We have seen how stress has been considered as a vector and stress can be added if required to find out the resultant of the two stresses in three dimension. Now the similar concept can also be applied on other problems. So this problem is not on stress or on strain, but it is important to note that what we learn from one chapter can be also useful to other chapter. So this small one we have to see. Consider there was an 80 meter drilling done along a line L1 and this L1 line has a 40 degree plunge and 90 degree trend. Then the drilling direction was changed along line L2. This L2 line has a 20 degree plunge and 0 degree trend. And this L2 drilling went for 26 meter deep and then it hits the target. So now the question is, so, so basically what has happened from here to there is that a drilling was done in certain direction at a depth. Then for some reason the drilling direction was changed and this became the drilling direction. I can show with my finger, say this was one drilling direction that was going on, some amount of drilling 80 meter and then it got changed to another direction. So the thing is instead of going this and this, suppose I want to straight away go there. So this is L1 line that is L2 line and this is I am calling as LR line. How much will be the LR length? and how much are the plunge and trend of LR line. In other words, what is the attitude of the LR line. I repeat this is nothing to do with stress or strain, but the vectorial concept that was used we will be applying here and let us see how it can be done. First of all, from the data 20 degree plunge and 0 degree trend L2 can be plotted which plots over here in the studio net. Line is plotted as a point there. And the L1 line with 40 degree plunge and 90 degree trend is plotted over there. So what it means, this is your 40 degree and you see this is east 90 degree trend and L2 line has 20 degree plunge and 0 degree trend. 0 degree means north, north is same as 0 degree. So this angle is how much I wrote 20 degree we can move the tracing sheet below is the stereo net by moving the tracing sheet I find a unique position when L1 and L2 fall within a single great circle which is drawn in the stereo net. We can draw that with a pencil and then again go back rotate back the tracing sheet to its previous position. By doing this, this is the great circle. So this great circle on this great circle two points are lying what is the three dimensional meaning? This great circle indicates a plane on which L1 and L2 lines lie. This is indicative of a plane on which L1 and L2 lines lie. Now we can find out the angle between L1 and L2 and let us say this angle is given by theta. So now we are going back to our well known diagram P vector and Q vector and there is a resultant LR or R in our case. I am equating the P vector with our L1 and Q vector with our given L2. And we know the angle right now from the stereo net this is the theta angle that has been found out. And we can we also know the L1 and L2 lengths. L1 length is 80 meter, that's what I write here, and the L2 length is 26 meter, that's what I write here. 
So instead of the formula p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta, I will write l1 square plus l2 square plus 2 l1 l2 cos theta. Now l1 is 80 meter, this will be put here 80 square, this will be taken here and 26 square plus 2 multiplied by 80 multiplied by 26 multiplied by cos theta, theta has to be found and cos theta has to be found and then we finally find out the magnitude. So this means what? This means the LR, the line's length has been obtained. First drilling was in one direction, then the drilling direction was changed and the target was reached. Suppose a straightway drilling was done from the source to the target, then that would have been the length. And suppose there is expenditure involved for per meter of drilling, one can calculate how much will be the expenditure. That also can be done. Okay, now the point is that we want to find out the attitude of LR line. Attitude for the line means the plunge and trend, the two things. How to do that? Now, from this diagram, you can have a look. This angle is phi. Phi is the angle between P and the R. In other words, in our case, P is L1, so L1 and LR, this angle is to be found out. That is given by the formula tan inverse Q sin theta by P plus Q cos theta. Now Q we are considering as L2, so I write as L2 sin theta divided by L1 plus L2 cos theta. L1 and L2 lengths are there, 80 and 26. Theta has been obtained from stereo net, so theta is known. L2 and L1 are known, in this way phi can be obtained. Now as per the diagram, phi is the angle between P and R, that's what I am writing. This is the phi angle P and R or L1 and LR, L1 and LR angle. Once that angle has been found, that angle can be plotted from L1 direction towards L2 in the diagram from L1 towards L2 is the angle in the stereo plot from L1 point towards L2 and lying on this great circle, I am going to plot the LR point which will be plotted. Some amount will be found and it will let us say plotted here. So this point represents LR. So where is phi here? This angle is phi. Needless to say from this diagram and also from that diagram, of course, theta is more than phi, that has to happen. So once the LR point is plotted from this, we can go back and find out the plunge and trend by standard stereo net exercise. By doing this, this problem has been handled. Now imagine instead of L1 and L2, there were three drilling run in three different directions starting from like L1, L2 and then L3. The respective values are given, how deep the drilling went along those directions, plunge and trends are given. Then also we can find in a similar way the resultant LR lines, plunge and trend, the attitude and the length. In this way, vector can be used not only to solve the stress problems which I have done, but also other problems in structural geology.